Before we get into this video, I really quickly want to say that this week, I was on the Sky Sports F1 podcast with 2016 F1 world champion Nico Rosberg. It was a really cool opportunity, me and Nico got to have some really fun debates going backwards and forwards on some recent F1 topics, and I had a really, really fun time. If you haven't already, then definitely go and check it out, go show some love and support in the comments, I'd really, really appreciate it. I'll leave a link to it in the description box down below, and I also want to say a massive thank you to every single last one of you for watching and supporting my content, because without you, opportunities like this would not be possible. I think it's fair to say that Sergio Perez recently has been under a lot of pressure. Despite being P2 in the championship, he has under-delivered relative to Max. Helmet Marco can't even get his story straight on if Checo will even be kept on for 2024. And the team is openly talking and lining up potential replacement drivers like Norris and Ricardo for 2025. There has been a lot of negative coverage of Checo, which unfortunately is just what happens when you underdeliver in elite sport. But I wanted to go back and talk about a time when Checo was at his absolute best. A time when he looked to be on the verge of dropping off the F1 grid with no seats and how, with his back up against the wall, he produced one of the most clutch season-ending runs that I have ever seen, which ultimately landed him in a championship-winning car for the next three years. In the spring of 2020, right before Formula 1 was one of the first sports to return after the COVID-19 pandemic put everything on pause, the driver market during the off period shifted massively with big changes even before we came back to the new start of the season. Ferrari and Vettel announced that he would not re-sign with the team, leaving at the end of 2020. And it seemed like everything moved extremely quickly after that announcement, with Ricardo leaving Renault to join McLaren, and then Sainz leaving McLaren to join Ferrari. When the season did eventually get back underway for 2020, that left a four-time world champion without a drive, and as you can imagine, a lot of the driver market was revolving around Seb. There was rumours linking Seb to pretty much every single team on the grid. He openly admitted that he would accept a return to Red Bull, but despite a bit of hopeful speculation, Horner quickly shot that down. There was links to Renault and McLaren with their star drivers leaving, and in the end, the biggest rumour given that this team didn't have any drivers signed up for 2021 was a potential superstar combination of Lewis and Seb at Mercedes. Despite the fact that by 2020 it was already known that Racing Point would become Aston Martin, rumours of Seb going there didn't really start right away. However, as the season got going, the speed of the Racing Point car could not be ignored and started making Aston Martin for 2021 look more and more appealing as a prospect in terms of having a good car in the short term and also that potential of what the team could become in the future. The only problem was that unlike at McLaren, Red Bull or Mercedes, everyone at Racing Point already had a contract. Checo had just signed a long-term deal at the end of the previous season, and Lance Stroll was Lance Stroll, more secure than any driver on the grid, given that his dad owned the team. It quickly became apparent that Lawrence Stroll wanted Seb. Signing a four-time world champion was a massive statement of intent for such a new project. And despite the fact that Checo was massively popular within the team and was also one of the best and most consistent drivers on the grid, scoring all five of the team's podiums up until that point, it quickly became apparent that it would be him who would have to make way for Seb to join. This was a really ruthless decision. Initially, Checo in the media kept it cool and said the only thing that he could say in that situation, which was that he had a contract for 2021 and that was that. However, after months of speculation, eight races into the season on the 10th of September, the announcement that everyone was waiting for had arrived. To give Checo a graceful exit out of the team, it was him who put out a statement first saying that he would leave the team at the end of the season, and only then was Seb announced officially as an Aston Martin driver for 2021. The timing of the announcement after eight races was at a low point of the season for Checo. He had to miss both of the Silverstone races due to COVID, meaning he had missed a quarter of the races so far, and not only was he still recovering from the after effects of COVID, even when he did come back, 
but it also meant that he was really trailing in the championship, being down in 11th on 34 points, with Lance up in 5th on 57. In terms of the options that were on the table for Checo for 2021, to call them a downgrade would be an understatement. The only teams that had offers on the table were Williams who were last, Haas who were second to last, and Alfa Romeo who were third to last. To go from contending for podiums in the third best car on the grid to basically the back of the grid was a gut punch for Checo to say the least. Understandably, he didn't want any of those options, and so he went with option B. Red Bull were yet again scratching their heads as despite Alex Albon looking promising in the back end of 2019, 2020 would be a struggle for the tie driver up against Max. It just like with Gasly, it seemed like going with yet another young Red Bull Jr. just wasn't working out, and so Checo's management and helmet Marco met pretty early on to discuss a move. But Red Bull made it clear they would give Alex as much time as they could and they would only make a decision on their driver lineup at the end of the season. This meant that Checo, with nine races left, had a choice. Take a guaranteed seat to be on the F1 grid in a back of the grid team or risk waiting until the end of the season with the potential of getting into a race winning car but with the very real possibility of not being on the F1 grid in 2021 if Red Bull chose to retain Alex Albon and if the other options were gone by then. Starting from Mugello, he had 9 races left to prove his worth to Red Bull, with the full knowledge that if Red Bull had any doubts, his F1 career would come to an end in 2020. With his back up against the wall and his F1 future literally on the line, Sergio Perez went on one of the best runs that I have ever seen, given the pressure that he was under. Keep in mind, to give a little bit of context, in 2020, similar to 2023, we had a runaway dominant team in Mercedes. The difference was that in 2020, we also had a clear second best car on the grid, with Max in the Red Bull. This meant that unless something went wrong for Hamilton, Verstappen or Bottas, on most days, fourth was almost the best result that you could get. In the first five races since the announcement came that he would be dropped, he finished 5th, 4th, 4th, 7th and 6th. Now, whilst you could make the argument that he wasn't the most impressive driver during this period, that consistency really got his season back on track and it also gave him the confidence to have an even stronger finish. Now, it also showed his trait of being a better driver on the Sunday compared to the Saturday. During this five race stretch, he finished ahead of where he qualified four out of the five times. Now, there is an argument to be made that on many occasions, he underdelivered in qualifying, but this has always been Checo's pattern throughout his career. He has never been a one lap specialist, but he has always made up for it when it counts in the races. However, the back end of the season is when he really turned the volume up to 11. In Istanbul, during a very tricky wet Grand Prix, and on a day where Lewis Hamilton secured his 7th World Championship, he mirrored Lewis's strategy and after pitting early from wet to inters, then did the majority of the race on just one set of inters, and amid all of the chaos and mistakes that the other drivers around him were making, he quietly brought the car home to finish P2 and score his first podium of the season. The race after that in Bahrain, which of course is famous for that horrific fiery crash with Roman Grosjean, with 3 laps to go whilst running once again on the podium in P3, his engine decided to explode in a fiery blaze and robbed him of back to back podium finishes. That did not stop him or let it define his season because then came the Sakir Grand Prix on the alternative layout of Bahrain and the defining race of his Formula 1 career where he would take his first Grand Prix win. It was a crazy weekend all round with so much going on but one by one the usual suspects fell away to open an opportunity for a miracle win. Lewis got Covid before the weekend so had to skip the race, Max got taken out by Leclerc on lap 1 and then Mercedes had an absolute disaster class of a race with a double stack that sabotaged both of their drivers with Russell also getting a puncture late on to add insult to injury. Make no mistake however, this was not a win that was just handed to Checo. He was also caught up in that Leclerc lap 1 incident 
and after pitting on the opening lap, dropped to stone dead last. He fought his way through the field, pulling off one great move after another, driving like a man possessed to get back onto the podium. And it was only then when he benefited from Mercedes, throwing away the race win. He became the first and only driver in Formula 1 history to win a Grand Prix after being last on the opening lap. And as we were watching this man win a race against all odds considering what he was going through, the only question that was on people's minds was, how can a driver this good not be on the 2021 grid? Of course, Checo didn't remain unemployed for very long. Despite the hilarious recreation in Drive to Survive of Christian Horner randomly phoning up Checo after that race to tell him that he would be a Red Bull driver, the actual deal was signed the day after the last race of the season in Abu Dhabi on December the 14th with the announcement being made four days later. Checo's gamble to back himself and risk not being on the grid entirely had paid off. If you remember earlier in the video I said that after the first eight races he was down in 11th in the championship. Well, in the nine races after he was dropped, he had climbed all the way up to 4th in the championship with Lance Stroll down in 11th. To me this will always remain as one of the best runs that I have ever seen in Formula 1. It's not necessarily a run in a championship fight like say Lewis had towards the end of 2021 or even a record run like Max is on now. But with the context of him potentially being dropped out of Formula 1 and the injustice of him losing a seat despite years of top level performances, this was a true back up against the wall with your future on the line kind of performances with Sergio Perez at his absolute best. Regardless of how much he is struggling now and what the future holds for him at Red Bull, never forget how good he was and how much he deserved to be there in the first place. Well, there you have it. Once again, don't forget to check out the latest episode of the Sky Sports F1 podcast with me and Nico Rosberg. And again, go show some love and support in the comments of that video. And if you did enjoy this video, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel. That would be greatly appreciated. And I'll see you in the next one.